a top 20 battle in Madison and a rivalry at that number six Wisconsin against number 16 Minnesota here at the Fieldhouse. The second meeting this season between these two teams, Minnesota winning in five the first time around. But that was to open Big Ten play. That was back in September. That was long ago but a long history between these two teams before that last win. Wisconsin had won eight of nine. As we look at our starting lineups, we're gonna see McKenna Looker rotate into that front row. She missed the match before last, came back with 10 kills in their most recent match against Michigan. For the Badgers, meanwhile, they continue to be without their top two defensive players, Libero, Lola Schumacher, and Kulte Guchtikin, day-to-day with injuries missing consecutive matches. Today also is the inaugural silent set match here for Wisconsin. It was started by former Penn State All-American Johnny Parker aiming to bring attention to the inaccessibility of hearing aids, not often covered by insurance. So the crowd silent until point number nine. That was Parker's number, and then they can break out. Miss Smrek down the line, but will miss fire in Minnesota. We'll start out with a one-point lead. Errors shot Wisconsin in the foot the last time these two teams met up about two months ago. Wisconsin has to play a lot cleaner this time. Alex Acevedo has been money at the service line. Starting things out here for the Gophers. Hansen over that block and flying in is Furbringer. Sprack also has been the hot hand for the Badgers offense as of late. Shaftmaster looking for Groach. Gets the touch, and Minnesota leading 2-0. Minnesota has to be a little bit more aggressive like that, like the last swing that we saw in that rally. Julia Hansen threw in two tips during that one. Tips are not going to win this matchup against Wisconsin. You have to swing aggressive, aggressive just like Grove did on the last swing. One thing that Kelly Sheffield said about this Minnesota team is they are not afraid of the block. They will go right to it aggressively as Wisconsin will answer back with their first point. Both Minnesota and Wisconsin are fantastic blocking teams, so expect both sides to continue to swing high and try to tool it very often, meaning it's hitting the block and then going out of bounds. You saw the fans there cheering and signing during this silent set to start set number one here at the Fieldhouse. Minnesota now leading by two. This was a focus for Wisconsin coming into this one. Even though it's silent in the gym, they're focused on, on creating their own energy from the bench and on the court, making sure that nothing changes on their end. Every bench captain excited to be involved in this one. Oh, my eyes just lit up. <laughs> right into the block. Yulia Orzel as crafty as always. Keegan Cook leading the Minnesota Golden Gophers in his second season. Since he's not focused on hosting and trying to calculate that out, just playing their best volleyball right now down the stretch and things will fall how they may. Yeah, you're trying to just win every single matchup and take new day one day at a time. For this Minnesota team, they can't look too far down the line. They have to focus on the match in front of them as they put that one down. Julia Hansen gets the touch in Minnesota. Looking aggressive here to start with some big rips. Julia Hansen has really stepped up for this Minnesota program. She's had back-to-back 20-kill -back nights and ninth in the conference right now during Big Ten play with four kills a set. Her numbers have been outstanding. The definition of a breakout season for the Minnesota native tries to push it over, but it's kept up by the Badgers. Shaftmaster looking cross court to Hansen and a lot of fire on that swing. A great start by Minnesota. Much more aggressive swing there from Hansen. That's what they have to do all night. Kelly Sheffield in his 12th season here in Madison. We're pointing out just a couple matches ago, the all time winningest head coach in program history, surpassing Pete Waite. He is up at the top and well deserved with the success he is created here as Minnesota strikes again from the service line where. It is daunting to face them. Minnesota is one of the toughest serving teams in the conference. They might not be up there in terms of aces per set, but their percentage that they're knocking teams out of system is the best in the conference, hands down. They've got a lot of gnarly servers back there. Yeah, aces per set is the flashy number, but what about situations like that? Hansen just slamming it down for a point. Just a phenomenal serve in the backcourt by Grote. What makes her serve so effective is there is no spin on it. That means it's catching the air pockets, forcing passers to move at the last second. Versus hard to predict, too. 
it, sometimes it has a little bit of spin on it. Sometimes there's no spin. It's kind of a hybrid, and you never know what you're going to get. That time perfectly executed by the Badger Smrek on the finishing end. And Smrek is going to have to be a big part of this Wisconsin offense tonight if they want to have success. Much better pass on Wisconsin side. Sarah Franklin handling, handling that beautifully. That leaves Smrek one-on-one -on, -one on the right. Harling Anderson, the backup setter, coming in to serve for the Badgers. He seems also expecting this to be a match of runs. Minnesota can really drag you through the mud, while Wisconsin, one of the best offenses in the country, can continually go for a run. And CeCe Crawford a little bit slow to get up after that point. Coming to four here early in set number one. CeCe Crawford back into this match. He checked on her, took an awkward step right here uh, yeah. on the last point. CeCe Crawford, she is back in the ball game. She's got a smile on her face. She is tough as nails. One of the most experienced in the Big Ten. Master looking for Hansen and just a misconnection giving the point to Wisconsin. The connection just a little bit off and sometimes that'll happen when you're running a fast tempo outside set. You have to be right on the money to hit that attacker. Shaftmaster hitting it just a little too high. Because this is the silent set, an opportunity to hear what actually goes on on the court. And I'm just out of the reach of Franklin, but we were talking, Emily, about how you get to really hear the communication that happens on the court in this situation. It's constant, normally throughout entire plays, but you don't normally hear it even if you're at matches because there's so much crowd noise happening throughout matches, but let's listen in and see how much you hear. point for the Badgers, bringing them within two against Minnesota. And something to listen for, too, is normally when an attacker is going up, their backcourt is constantly telling them what shots to hit. So the backcourt normally has the best eyes of, hey, you should hit this ball to the cross court. You can go down the line. And as an attacker, you listen to your backcourt and hit what they say a lot of the time if you can't see the block yourself. McKenna Wooker coming into the game. Doesn't get the touch there. She'll be rotating throughout the front row. Missed their last match. Or match before last against Nebraska came back with 10 kills. Apologies for my distraction from Bucky <laughs> doing a headstand, but a challenge the coming here. The decision is that the ball's out, no touch, point, Wisconsin, Minnesota's challenging that there was a touch on the play. Minnesota seemed pretty confident right after that came off her hands. Oh, yeah. That left ring finger of number 10 in white. Robinson just clipping that a little bit based on that angle. After review, there was a touch on the play. The call will be reversed. Point will go to Minnesota, and they will retain their challenge. Good call by the Minnesota coaching staff bringing that challenge here early, knowing how hard it is to even win sets in this building. In Big Ten play, a place for Wisconsin this season, 10 and 1 this season. That only lost a sweep at the hands of Nebraska. We saw how close this matchup was the first time. It was 18 to 16 in the fifth. Every single point is extra important. Elise McGee subbing in to serve. Goes right into the net there, and Wisconsin gets that point back. Crawford coming back in. And she'll take over at the service line for Wisconsin. from Julia Hansen from the back row. We get to see a, a longer rally there. And you can really see the play unfold and how much movement there is in the backcourt, how much they're talking to each other. Listen to this. Ready, 
Now, all of that noise is coming from the players on the court. No fans there at all. Right into the net once more. A surface air by Minnesota. They still lead by two, 10 to eight. And the crowd awaiting that next point, signaling the end of this silent set, raising awareness for the deaf and hard of hearing communities and the financial barriers to acquiring hearing aids. Doug in the back row by Orzel. Had a Wooker pulling it off the block with a big rip. Minnesota's offense has stayed balanced all night long. Shaftmaster is getting every hitter involved and doing a great job going for those high hands. The hitters are really targeting those blockers, not afraid of the big block in front of them. Damro with the bump set looking for Smrek. The violation is going to give a point to Minnesota. And you hear that crowd erupt. That silent set point on the ninth point, they hit 110 decibels. That's like the equivalent of a jackhammer right in your ear. Johnny Parker said in her At The Net feature with Big Ten Network that with the silence that you step into the world of someone with hearing loss. So a lesson for these fans, but they were ready to erupt here at the Fieldhouse and do once more. Oh, these Badger fans are some of the best. They always show up for their team, especially in big matches like this, where it's a border battle, it's a ranked opponent, so much on the line for Wisconsin. Expect this place to keep erupting. Paige Damro stepping in to wear the jersey for the Badgers without Lola Schumacher and Kute Gushikin. Virgil off the block and Acevedo can't get there for the point. Orgel doing a phenomenal job taking charge up front of some junk plays. It's not a beautiful situation, a broken play on Wisconsin side. Out of system set, Orgel still finds a way to put it down. Targeting Hansen in serve receipt. Groats taking that heat is damn row to keep it alive. The Pancake Shaftmaster keeping it up. And out of play, Wisconsin has tied this match after a little bit of a shaky start. We didn't see much defense through the first 10 points, but now we are seeing it left and right. Sage Damro in the backcourt with an incredible up on her side. And then the Pancake for Melanie Shaftmaster on Minnesota's side. Defensive intensity picking up here. 3 nothing run for the Badgers with Damro at the service line. Rhodes again, it's Dambro taking it. Orzel expertly off the block, and Wisconsin now with the lead. Sage Dambro looking like she's had the libero jersey on all year. Phenomenal digs left and right, taking these line shots and just eating them up. The block is funneling these swings right toward her, and she's handling it. Damro had her third surgery on her knee last season. She was non-load bearing for eight weeks, had a 12-month recovery. Now the Wisconsin native who committed to be a Badger as an eighth grader, so proud of her progress, now playing an important role in an important stretch for this team. It is massive to have Sage Damro play well. She started off the season as one of two liberos that Wisconsin used as they utilized that new rule of the NCAA change but she hasn't had much court time in all of conference play. The last two matches, she's been asked to don that jersey, and she's been massive for Wisconsin in those matches that she came in. Wisconsin taking control of this set, a 4-0 scoring run. They're hitting 430, and we've come to associate this team with efficiency. Really, the main attackers, Sprack and Orzel, doing the damage early. 
it's really massive for Wisconsin to have Orgel put up those kind of numbers. She's four for six, hitting 667. Normally the sets that Orgel gets are junk passes, meaning they're out of system. Because if Wisconsin is in system, they want to go to Smrek or one of their middles, or even Franklin in the backcourt. What makes Julie Orgel so good is she's so great at handling the junk. Out of system situations, chaos happening on Wisconsin's side. Orgel calms the chaos and finds a way to put it down. The fact that she's so to speak, taking out the trash yeah. with this offense, but still the last five hitting nearly 350 says a lot about her and the way she's able to score. The Badgers five to one scoring run since that silent set point. You think the crowd had something to do with that? Yeah, that tells you exactly how much the crowd gets into this. And I'll tell you, it is deafening in here right now. The Gophers looking to regroup, but that goes into the net. Wisconsin, they get another. Connection's a little bit shaky on Minnesota side. Schaffmaster's under set a few players now, has to get that a little bit higher. Minnesota down by two, but feels like they're on their heels with the crowd now engaged. And the crowd has completely neutralized the first nine points. That goes out, point to Minnesota. That will help to try and reignite their play. Rhodes, excellent at the service line. Part of the reason Minnesota forcing such a low good pass percentage against opponents leading the Big Ten. Orschel finds the exact right spot and puts it down. Wisconsin is really exploiting the overload set, meaning when you have a middle running right next to the outside, normally on a perfect pass, you expect the middle to get the ball. That draws the block in and opens things up when you go over the middle to the outside. That's an open net. Anderson back to serve for Wisconsin. And it's too long. Four service aces combined between these two teams. And now Hansen will take over another player for Minnesota with at least 20 aces this season. And what's been a breakout year? Hansen has that sail a little bit too long. So back-to-back -back service airs. Minnesota knows that they have to serve tough because Wisconsin can get in a rut in passing from time to time, but the Gophers have to do a better job of keeping it and not hand Wisconsin free points. You said in the open, Emily, how important this game is for Wisconsin's hopes of a Big Ten championship, and they're doing it at the service line. Orgel off the tape and down. Wisconsin is completely in the race right now for the title, for the Big Ten title. If that comes down to an outright title, maybe, but they have to win this matchup. It is a must win for the Badgers. Orgel targeting Hansen from the ground. The set coming from Shaftmaster and another big dig in the back row. Putting it to the floor is Franklin with four. Wisconsin is playing great all the way. They got better, we got better, but Wisconsin has settled into such a groove at this point, which they really weren't quite who they are back when they first played. A lot of that for Wisconsin was having a freshman setter coming in. It took time to learn those connections. Then they could focus on defense once conference play started, and they had those connections down. Franklin has that tapped back. Gets another look from Furbringer, and she crushes it. Franklin has such a high volleyball IQ. The first set wasn't great, so she hit it right into the block, recycling that, knowing her coverage is there, and she'll get another attempt at this swing. Then with the second one, a much better look, and she can unload. Off the tape, read well by Hanson. Here's Booker back in the front row, and that lands back on Minnesota's side and the point. So that ball going off Wisconsin's block, hitting the scoreboard on the top and coming back on Minnesota's side. If that ball were to stay on the Badger side, that would have been okay, but since it crossed the plane over to the other side, that's when you get called for it. Wisconsin now up by four. Shaky out of the gate, but in control. Devin Robinson with a big swing, puts it down for the kill. Wisconsin utilizing this three middle system. So when Devin Robinson goes over to the right side, a much better slide attacker than what we see from CC Crawford. One swing, one kill. 
Bat in a thousand. That's there you go. the kind of treasure trove that Wisconsin has with their offensive attack. CC Crawford, Crawford putting it into play. Looker puts away the soft shot. Really well disguised tip from McKenna Looker. It looked like she was going to take a swing on this up until the last second. Then she pulls that elbow down to throw it right over the block in front of her. Watch her bring this elbow right down at the end and just go right over the block. Looker was in the midst of recovering from injury. She had missed the prior couple matches and then three after playing against Wisconsin just appeared, had a couple of digs, and she can be a game changer. Groats unleashes the fire on that swing. Lydia Grote was fantastic the last time these two teams met. Led Minnesota with 17 kills. She's going to be a go-to tonight for this team that needs someone to rely on that isn't an outside attacker, and she's been great so far. That's too strong from Shaftmaster. And a point for Wisconsin, inching closer to set point, leading 21-17. Minnesota with their fourth service error of the night so far. That is way too many through not even the first set. Minnesota has to clean it up. And for a team that depends so much on their service pressure. And you need to have tough service pressure, but it's a delicate balance of also just getting the ball in and allowing your defense the opportunity to shine. Throats off the hands of Damro, and the kill going to the Gophers. And a good up by Damro in the backcourt. Orschel right there to play it, just not enough length to get that up. Really well hit for Minnesota going right off the block, skying that ball. <laughs> She's like, I should have had that. <laughs> right there. Throwbringer tracks it down, finds Franklin, and that's tap back. Franklin readdress, takes some heat off. Hansen gets that to fall. A confident swing from Julia Hansen. Really good swing from Hanson right on the sideline. Wisconsin's libero not in a great position to make that play. If you're playing left back, you have to be outside of that block to make sure you take away this angle. Challenge coming up here from the Wisconsin sideline. The original decision is that the ball is in. Point Minnesota. Wisconsin is challenging that the ball was out. Any part touching that line. Based on this look, that ball looks out. After review, the ball is out. The call will be reversed. The point will go to Wisconsin, and they will retain their challenge. Quick challenges. Yeah. Let's go, Daphne McClarty. <laughs> We're two for two in quick challenges. And that one going in favor of Wisconsin. They now lead 22 to 18. That's a significant one right here as they try and take set one. Both these coaches retaining those challenges, two on either side. Master <laughs> looking for growth, pushing it over. more into the block and plays it. Hansen, what a swing. She is fiery and comes up in a big moment. You gotta have a lot of guts if you're going and taking a big swing against Anna Smrack and Carter Booth. 6'9 and 6'7. Julie Hansen's not afraid of anything. She's gonna continue to bring the hammer. Look how big this block is right in front of her, but she is not afraid of it. Up the middle, Carter Booth puts it away for the Badgers. That's just Wisconsin's third total set to their middles this entire time. The Pins have done such a great job, though, even in perfect pass situations. Furbringer is setting a beautiful game, knowing that those Pins are going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Orzol and Franklin airless on 16 combined swings, leading the way offensively. Smrek right behind them. What Wisconsin is doing is using their Pins to actually open up their middles, which normally you see the other way around. Lydia Groats gets a piece there. Minnesota scrappy trying to make this a late first set comeback. Early in the first set, Lydia Groat had a service run back on the end line. It is a tough float serve with no spin on it. Wisconsin service seed has to talk about their scenes early. That 
time. Another service air for Minnesota. That's been their Achilles heel, and that is five in set one alone. Way too many errors, just essentially handing Wisconsin this set. You look at the point differential, four points right now. That's the difference. Wisconsin with set points on their home floor. and damn row there to keep it off the floor. That's going to land out. Minnesota stays alive in set one. Those are the plays that Wisconsin has to capitalize on. If you want to be a top team in the country, you cannot give any breath to the team on the other side of the net, especially in easy situations, sending a free ball out of bounds. Hansen will try to keep the Gophers alive in set one. Orzol gets the contact, and therefore set number one goes to the Badgers in this border battle rivalry, 25 to 21. 16 to 10 was the run by the Badgers since that silent set point. Do you think it is hard to play in here with this crowd here with a late start and on a weekday night making an impact? Wisconsin hitting 425 in set number one and take a one nothing lead. Fed a lot of junk, whether that's out of system plays or difficult swings that she's taking and she's finding ways to use the block really well. Orzhul is someone who could be OH1 on any number of teams, but plays such a versatile, important role for the Badgers. Landa Libero, we saw her last year <laughs> don that jersey the entire year. They say, hey, Yuli, we need you to play whatever. She's like, all right, I got it. Now she's you just need a setter? Okay. <laughs> now she's just showing off. Yeah. It's honestly unfair. <laughs> Damro with the bump set. Franklin had to reset going over the block and flying in is the Libero quickly on a dime. Franklin puts it down. Those are the kinds of heads up plays you have to have if you're playing in the front court. If you see an overpass, that reaction time has to be so quick from seeing that pass to getting up and shutting it down. That kind of ball not going to elude Sarah Franklin up to four kills, hitting 273. Groats had an excellent first set. Five kills so far. A Sprack able to tool it off the block for the Badgers. Both sides are doing such a great job using the block in front of them. Both Minnesota and Wisconsin are two of the best blocking teams, not only in the Big Ten, but the country. And so far, zero blocks for either team because the hitters are doing such a great job going off the top of them. Two nothing lead to start for the Badgers here in set two. Up the middle of the first swing from Phoebe Awalea. Franklin perfectly gets the fingers going high hands and a point to the Badgers. Franklin makes hard plays look easy. It is not easy to go up, see the block in front of you and go right over it. But this is one of the reasons why we've seen none tonight is Franklin and the rest of the court, both sides have done a phenomenal job at using the block. Just having to be craftier with their yeah. swings? Exactly. I mean, the, the difference is when you know you're going up against a big block, you have to change the way that you swing. You have to be more aggressive and swing high. That's what both sides are doing really well. Lydia Groats just takes a big hammer there for another kill. To get Minnesota on the board here in set two. Groat having herself an awesome night so far. Six for 13 right now, 462. This is the kind of night Keegan Cook said he needed from her. Both of the her pins, Julia Hansen and Lindergaard, have to have big nights. Last match against Michigan hit 348, had six blocks, six digs. She's having a moment right now, late in the season. It's Minnesota with that play at the net will pick up the point. Well, Minnesota also has no production from their middle so far. Zero kills are actually combined hitting negative. So the pins, Grote, Hansen, and Wooker have had to have a big night, even to stay in this so far for Minnesota because their passing hasn't been great. Looking for Franklin, has that turned back. Franklin with the tip, Awalea keeping it up. Tracked down by Orzel. And a free ball for the Gophers. Hansen rips it. 
beautiful swing from Julia Hansen, targeting the seam right between the blockers. In these situations, Wisconsin has to do a better job of identifying it early and getting those hands back into the seam. That's difficult to do on a free ball pass. A smart decision from Shaftmaster. Hansen coming off a career high 24 kills against Michigan. Coach Cook says you are watching someone in real time come into their own, but that time, no getting around that block between Smrek and Booth, and we have a block, Emily. Perfect adjustment from Smrek on that ball. She got beat inside in the seam the time before. This time, dropped that left hand to not allow that seam to be shown. Perfectly executed on Wisconsin side. Back set for Groats, and played by Furbringer. Smrek goes right into that Minnesota block, and it's rejected. Again, into the net is gonna give the point to Minnesota. Orzel getting a little bit aggressive, trying to take that ball over. The set was too tight for her to take, so it's a difficult position to be in. Trying to force the ball off the block, her hand just came down on it. Tied up at four, Minnesota Trail 3-0 here early. Zina Palaviak back to serve. Smrek misses by just a bit, and Minnesota will now take the lead. Smrek trying to do just a little bit too much with that swing going for the sideline. That needs to go a little bit more angled toward the corner. And their four said win against UCLA. Smrek hit 6.09. 16 kills on 23 swings. And she has been one of the major go to's for this Wisconsin offense. To the back row and the stump by Alvalea, who lets out a roar on the solo stump. Perfectly read on Minnesota's side, knowing that that back row attack was coming at some point. Awalea and Grote read it beautifully, lined up perfectly together and going up at the exact same time. Actually, the sophomore, Kalissa Minnity, who has been in and out of the lineup, stepping right into that play. Awalea amongst the leaders in Big Ten play in blocks. But here, Minnity making an impact, as does Hanson. Getting the touch. No touch there. Minnesota with another point. Smrek really trying to go for that high hand shot, but now back-to-back -back errors for her. She has to do a better job of getting on top of it and snapping down. 4 nothing run by the Gophers. Smrek again will miss fire on the same shot. The Furbringer now at Big10plus.com. Palabiak getting it into play. Hansen off the feed from Shaftmaster will connect. Hansen puts it down, but I love the set from Furbringer to go back to Anna Sprint, continuing to stride and instill that confidence in her and say, okay, you made a few errors, but let's continue to get that connection down and get your confidence back up. Just a really well-read play on Minnesota side from Palabiak. Continuing a 6-0 run by Minnesota. And that is going to be an ace. Palaviak happier than anyone on the court. And Palaviak is putting her entire body weight into these <laughs> serves. She is driving that thing so far back. So much strength in that little arm she's got. She also plays with so much joy. You will oh never gosh. see her without a smile. She celebrates. I know everyone celebrates every point, but she truly no, she, celebrates she everyone. She celebrates every point. Orzel <laughs> <laughs> with a big swing into the Minnesota block. Rhodes can't get it to fall. The Badgers defense stepping up, but Minity takes care of it up the middle. That's Minnesota's first kill from. That's going to be a violation with touches. And Minnesota will pick up another to lead 12 to 4. The key to the serving run has been the serving from Palavik in the backcourt. She is driving the ball back, hitting the seams incredibly well. Wisconsin has to make some kind of serve receive adjustment. Robinson, no touch there. Just misfired and Minnesota has its role continue. When Wisconsin gets a good pass, they have to be able to capitalize that. In this rotation, Sarah Franklin might be in the backcourt, but I'd go with her in a back row attack. 13 to 1 is the scoring one. They were down 3 nothing to start this set. Off the bump set, it's gross. And then dug by Furbringer. 
Corjol right into that block and tap down. Minnesota showing its physicality at the net. Now Wisconsin's just playing timid. Those are swings that Orgel normally takes right off the block. We don't oftentimes see her roll shot those plays. Wisconsin has to be more aggressive up front if they want to come back in this down 10. Wisconsin hitting negative 227 in this set. Eight errors. Throats going high hands on that swing. Devin Robinson able to get that past Acevedo for a badly needed point. Finally, some production on the right side from Wisconsin. Sprack had that three run, hitting balls out of bounds. Devin Robinson hit a ball out of bounds. Finally, they're able to connect on the right side of the court. Robinson with her second kill. You mentioned Smrek hitting zero right now on 14 swings. Served by the Badgers, resulting in a free ball. Up the middle, Crawford has that sent back. Orzel tooling it off the block to try and get a run going. That's why Orzel has to be aggressive up front, even though there is a big block in front of her. When she swings right at it for those high hands, she's scoring at such an insanely high clip because that block isn't perfectly formed right in front of her. Staying aggressive is key for the Badgers. Paige Damro was excellent at the service line in set number one. That time goes right into the net. Our apologies to Paige. <laughs> Jinx not intended. But she indeed ignited a late run in order for the Badgers to take set one. Furbringer gets it over to Orzul with the roll shot. On the side, minutes he has that rejected, but Minnesota will get the point with the fall. Melanie Schaffmaster is making it a point to get her middles much more involved here in the second set. The passing has also allowed for that to happen. When the ball is tight, you can run the middle. Perfect example of this five feet off, Schaffmaster can get the slide going. Coach Cook loves the defensive minutes, but she's also proving herself on the offensive side too tonight. Robinson, a lot of heat on that swing. The Gophers can't handle it. This is what makes Devin Robinson so versatile. She's technically a middle on this team, but she can play middle just as well as she can on the right side, just as lethal over there in translating a lot of those swings. See that attack height even going over the block too. She's jumping out of the gym. Palabiak, the bump set to Hansen, who will fire. Hansen, one more try, and rejected the brick wall of the Badgers standing up there. The Badgers with a perfectly formed block moving at the same time. Watch these blockers go up. They have the same movements, hands pressed over the net. Really great finish up front from Charlie Furbringer, the setter. Right into the net by Anderson. But Furbringer holding her own in that regard in the game. Yeah, she might just be a freshman in 5'11", but she's done a really nice job so far this season becoming a defensive force. Well, she's surrounded by great blockers. The great wall of Madison. Let's see where they rank in conference. Play three players in the top five in blocks per set. Three over 1.3. That is an insane number. And in this conference? Yeah. That's gonna land off the swing from Minnesota. They take an 18 to eight lead. Minnesota just continuing the pressure on Wisconsin, whether that's from the service line or on attack. Keegan Cook always says, we're either applying pressure or feeling pressure. Minnesota's applying all the pressure right now. Badgers out of system with yet another serve from the Gophers. And a whistle is gonna give the point an illegal attack from the back row. And Minnesota will take it. So this becomes an illegal attack when Furbringer is above the plane of the net. Kelly arguing right now that that ball was not above the plane of the net because Furbringer is in the back court. Seeing it live, it didn't look like she was over the plane of the net. She maybe got an inch or two off the ground. This is a subjective call, but this is not something that you can challenge. Furbringer 
looking to Orzul, tries to push it into the block, but Minnesota says no. Minnesota's block coming alive at it, but let's take another look at that Furbringer set. Again, if she's above the plane of the net, that can get called. Honestly, that, that's a good call. That, that looks above to me based on this angle. Again, that's subjective though. You can't challenge it. On the slide, it's Crawford, but kept up by Thibault. And one more time on the slide. And again, kept up by Thibault. Free ball for Minnesota. Walker will miss fire. Walker with a good shot going for the high hands, just a little bit missed on the execution, going a bit too high. Playing in the front row in this match has been day to day throughout the season with injury. Come off a 10 kill match in their fourth set win against Michigan. That time takes some heat off to perfection. Two plays have fallen in the middle of the court on Wisconsin's side over the last five points. They have to do a better job of defending that. And that needs to come from Sage Damro, the libero in the backcourt. She has to take charge of those balls. Wisconsin still without their top two defensive players, Lola Schumacher, Will J. Guchtikin. They are day to day with injury, missing their second straight match apiece. Bringer takes a look, goes to Franklin. Good things happen as Wisconsin tries to mount a late run. And Wisconsin down 11 in this set right here. You might not come back and win it. It's going to take a lot of grit. But the key right now is just building momentum. Can we string together a few good plays to not make it feel like we're down 11 and just get those connections back where they were during the first set when Wisconsin hit 429? We've got 10 attack errors in this set alone, tying a season high that they had against TCU. Not a common occurrence. Walker will rise and fire. Walker's arm is looking fresh. Beautiful swing right down the line. Seeing what was open, going across her body, not looking at the shot. Watch her move her arm across her chest. <laughs> She's hitting that with pace. You could hear that. It sounds different coming off her hand. Yeah. Point to Wisconsin. Off the serve. Minnesota creeping closer to set point, trying to even up this match in Madison. Furbringer making tremendous strides since the first time these two teams met as a freshman setter. Booker again will terminate with force. McKenna Walker has got a hot hand right now. She is bringing all the heat. Doesn't matter if she's on the left or the right. Shaftmaster knows that she's heating up and is going to feed her every single time. Beautiful ball right inside. A really big block in front of her. Since she's playing the front row, a big smile as she came off the court with her head coach, Keegan Cook, too. That tapped back off the swing from Franklin. She'll get another look. And again, it's rejected. Minnesota's block making itself known in set two. Phoebe Awalea doing a really good job dropping that left hand inside the seam. Franklin's an attacker that is constantly ripping that cross-court shot to the middles. Have to be great with that left hand inside. Set point for the Gophers in set two. Just who they wanted the service line, Alex Osavito. Franklin with a lot of fire will hammer that down. Better adjustment from Franklin. Gets blocked in the cross-court, switches it up, and goes right down the line for the kill. Minnesota, a commanding lead. Hansen ends set two, and a strong one for the Gophers. Is leading the conference in a hit percentage during conference play. They're normally hitting 323 per set. That is not the kind of night that you want to see. The biggest difference, though, Minnesota is forcing the service pressure on Wisconsin, and they can't run the efficient offense they're known for. They are fourth in the country in hitting percentage overall this season. Minnesota defensively absolutely locked in. In the back row, Orschel tries to place it over. Hansen makes it tough, but kept up by the Badgers. Then Franklin will convert for the first point of set three. 
Only Sarah Franklin can make those kinds of plays. This ball is so tight to the net, and she's going up against one of the best blockers in the country in Phoebe Awalea, and she goes over her on a tight ball. She couldn't even believe it. <laughs> can still be that good and surprise yourself. I mean, she's one of a kind. Three ball for Minnesota. Rhodes getting crafty and making it happen for the Gophers. Minnesota's just continually applying the pressure on Wisconsin, forcing them into situations that the Badgers don't want to be in, causing chaos on their side. A lot of easy balls that they're not handling well, and then they're out of system continually. Kalabiak goes into the net. The seventh service air by this aggressive serving Minnesota team. Minnesota did better during the second set, just one service air during that one, but set one, five. It was way too many. That was something they cleaned up really well during the second. The target Hansen in serve receive. Throats goes right into the net, and the Badgers will take that one. And that was just a bad set. Melanie Shaftmaster leading Grote way too inside. There was nothing Grote could have done with that one except maybe pass it over. Ninth hitting air for Minnesota. Wisconsin has 13, hitting 139 for this match as a whole. <laughs> Off the bump set, Orschel. And then dunk by Palabia. Hansen blasts it. Hansen continuously hitting that cross court deep five shot. Wisconsin has to make some adjustment. Damaro has to get outside the block on this. She's way too far inside the court toward her middle blocker. Hansen's always had the athleticism, her vertical jump, but the confidence we have seen. Now one of the top 10 and kills per set in the Big Ten this season. She gets another swing and snaps it down the line. Out go and the point to the Badgers. Hansen trying to show off her range, just doing a little bit too much with that, taking her shoulders and her arm cross body rather than just one or the other. Sends that ball wide. Four to two is the Wisconsin lead. After they won set one, only scored 12 in set two. Carly Anderson into serve. On the slide, it is Minitzi that is kept up, but Wisconsin out of system. Hansen with the stop, it is Crawford showing her dominance at the net. Much better adjustment from CC Crawford up there. Hansen was ripping that cross court shot. Watch Crawford drop her left hand inside that seam to take the shot away. Sail too long, a point to Minnesota. Every time it feels like Wisconsin gets momentum, they kill it with a miss serve on the back line. They have to do a better job of controlling those situations and keeping momentum, keeping the ball in play. Five service errors for the Badgers, 12 combined on either side. Hansen steps to the line. Furbringer looking for Franklin in the back row, and that's Duck. Hansen tried to just place it over, and we play on. Attempted dump by Shaftmaster. Walker has that turned back. On the slide, it is Minity pushing it over, and the Gophers fired up in this set three. Minnesota's doing a nice job running a lot on the right side of the court. Whether it's a true opposite set or a middle running behind on a slide, Shaftmaster's done a nice job of spreading this offense out really well. Their coverage has been outstanding against a good blocking team in Wisconsin as well on Minnesota side. Four players with at least four kills, led by Hansen's 10. As that will go out of bounds, and a point to Wisconsin. Now eight service errors for the Gophers. Herschel gets a piece of the tape. Minnesota in trouble. And that point going to Wisconsin. 
Wisconsin forcing that service pressure, knocking Minnesota out of system. This is when Minnesota has to dig in back there and talk about those scenes early. Walker has to readjust and it won't fall. Shaftmaster instead goes into the net. Wisconsin actually with the violation, and it will be a point to Wisconsin. Sarah Franklin has had an unreal season <laughs> after she already had a ridiculous season last year. Look at what she's done the last four matches, how many swings that is, and just three airs entering tonight. 129 swings and she only gets three balls out of bounds or blocked. That is absolutely insane. She just does not miss. I can't even summon an explanation for that kind of play. I mean, she just checks into another level. What's been most impressive about her so far this season, though, is not only are her numbers better than last year, but she's getting better as the season's gone on. A lot of times you see some players take dips near the end of the year because it's a long season, you get tired. But Franklin is not only doing that, but she's getting better. Her numbers somehow, Emily, are even better than last year when she was the National Player of the Year. And I'll add to this too, she's hitting 308 compared to 301 last year. There's video game numbers, but she's putting up middle blocker numbers as an outside who draws immense attention from every single opponent. And with those numbers, it's not like they're slightly better. I mean, they are exponentially better than they were last year. And she won National Player of the Year last season in the running for that, in the running for Big Ted Player of the Year as well. Looking to become a back-to-back -back ABCA Player of the Year and a very small and distinguished group to do so. And two of those gold medalists, so that's a pretty good list to be on. Furbringer looks to Franklin. One more time, and Minnesota gets a piece. Walker will not get that to fall. It was too long and a point to Wisconsin. Wisconsin taking that slight edge. Minnesota getting a little bit sloppy up front. They need to do a better job keeping that ball in play. Two point lead for number six Wisconsin over number 16 Minnesota. Here in set three. Up the middle, Awalea has that turned back. Walker over the block, right in time is Damra. And again with a dig. Off the set from Palabi, and Damro stepping up again. And Groat will slice it for a kill. But incredible effort by Paige Damro, her second consecutive match wearing the jersey. I mean, Sage Damro is completely suffocating Minnesota, making it so hard for them to put a ball down. It's so frustrating as an attacker when you're just getting dug up left and right, and you have to take swing after swing. Minnesota gets it in the end, but man, Damro's doing a good job. And Smrek taking that heat is Hansen, and we'll play on. Free ball for the Badgers. Franklin has that turned back, and Minnesota's block really locked in on that swing. Really explosive play from Phoebe Awalea up front. A quick go attack is one of the most difficult to block as a middle because it's so fast, and you have to be quick to get out there. Phoebe Awalea didn't get her body there, but she got her hands there to finish it. 11th in the nation in blocks per set is number seven, Phoebe Awalea. Minnesota continues to reap the benefits of their aggression at the service line. Minnesota's made it very clear who their serve target is. That has been Sage Damro this entire night. They are going after her, hitting the seams in front of her and behind her, making it a point to get her out of system. Off the overpass, Damro will chase it down. Her bringer off her forearm keeps it up. Had to readjust, and that was rejected. And then Sarah Franklin, who else takes care of it? The split reaction time that Sarah Franklin has is absolutely insane. She's done this twice already this match, where the ball is barely over the top of the tape, and she has to explode up just that quick twitch fibers. I mean, she's she's incredible. 
Julia Hansen has that dug in the back row by Franklin. Jackmaster behind her head finds Groats. And a point to Minnesota with the touch. Minnesota battling back. It's been a back and forth battle this entire third set. A really good response from Wisconsin here. And Minnesota's continuing to just keep punching back. Starts at the service line. Here's Palabiak. <laughs> Orzel flips it over, places it perfectly. You gotta have a 10 second memory in this sport. It's a game of errors. If you didn't win the last point, perfect opportunity to take the next one. Both teams responding very well. Orzel with eight kills. Franklin leading the Badgers with nine. Hansen, a lot of fire on that swing. Bump set from Palabiak and Grote gets it over. Orzel tights in a battle with Grote. It plays on. And put down by Anna Smrek. More craftiness as she goes off speed. Smrek's hard hits aren't landing on Minnesota's side, so she has to switch it up, become a little bit more crafty, throw in these roll shots or tips. It's doing a much better job than hitting this ball out of bounds. Sage Damro back to serve. Flying in for the dig. Hansen can't put it down. Then finally, Minnesota does with Minity after a little chaotic play. <laughs> Wisconsin saying, hey, we're, we're good. We're good. A lot of chaos happening on their side. Bodies all across the floor just to try to get this ball up. Until that defensive intensity really picking up on both sides. Incredible up from Damro. Then she's back in it. Everyone just trying to lay out for this one. Really good net play, though, on Minnesota's side. Hey, however you have to get them, we're tied up at 12 in this top 20 matchup in Madison. It's Lydia Grove to serve for the Gophers. Again, targeting Damro, and that's what's working for Minnesota right now. And Lydia Groat's serve is absolutely fantastic. There is no spin on it, and she's driving this ball really deep, and Damro has not been able to handle these right at her shoulder. Watch how this comes out. No spin on that at all. It is so difficult to pass coming over your shoulder. Just looks like a knuckleball coming right at you. Yeah. Rhodes again to Damro. This time she handles it. Orzul will slice it cross court. Good swing from Orzul. Wisconsin has to do a better job of terminating balls out of system because of how hard Minnesota is serving. Wisconsin's been out of system at a high clip, and those outsides have had to handle a heavy load with junk balls. Coach Sheffield saying Minnesota's a team that forces you to pass well. Yeah. That's a hard thing to do. In, right into that block. Orzul will tool it for a kill. Almost every single one of Orzul's kills has been off the block. She is so crafty with great court vision, seeing where the blocker's hands are and just targeting them perfectly. Watch this swing from her. It's a good block formed, and then she finds a way to just go right above it. Up to 10 kills now, hitting 250 for Orzul. Hansen getting the touch, and Minnesota will tie this up about midway through the third. Julia Hansen is ripping the cross court time and time again, whether it's that sharp cross court or back deep into the corner, really making Sage Damro work in the back for Wisconsin. And 11 kills for Julia Hansen. She's hitting 167, but she's going to continue to get balls her way. And now she's back to serve. Kevin Robinson will miss, and Minnesota will pick up the points. For the Bruins, Burbringer tries to dump that over, goes right into the net. 
Well, good decision for Furbringer. She hasn't been too offensive tonight. And even though she didn't get that, it still instills that she's able to be a threat up front. And that'll keep the block guessing. Minnesota now leading by two. Strong run with Hansen at the service line makes that incredibly tough. Wooker over the block, the pancake from Miley Chan not in time. And this run will continue for the Gophers. The Wisconsin's having so much trouble in serve receive. Minnesota's serving them off the court, pushing them back and then dropping one short. Four nothing run for Minnesota here with the field house. Check out the movement on the serve. Off the tape and it goes over. Robinson has that turn back. The back row blast from Franklin. She was looking for the touch. Or was she over the line, actually? It will be a point for Minnesota. Sarah Franklin stepping over that 10-foot line. If any part of your foot touches it on the takeoff, that's an automatic point for the other team, an illegal back row attack. Ball also hit out of bounds. There's that toe right on the line, barely on that takeoff. Really good identification from the refs. That serve going into the net and a point to Wisconsin. Now they'll try to go on a run themselves, something Coach Sheffield predicted. We saw it in this first match between these two teams. They're both capable of going on significant runs, Minnesota right back to it with the touch from the swing from Wooker. That's why having a 10 second memory and forgetting the last play is so important because you can't take what happened weekend and beyond. Most from a single conference with those nine stacked up near the top. And then of course you have teams like Wisconsin, Penn State trying to either get in or maintain a top four seed potentially. Top four seed, meaning you can host their regional. So through the first four rounds all the way up to the national semifinals. Kind of Wooker, and that turned back. <laughs> Wooker again over the block. Right there is Anderson. Devin Robinson fiercely puts it down. Strong, confident swing from Robinson at a time when Wisconsin needed it the most. They've been way too high air during this third set. Robinson went up and stayed aggressive on it. Wisconsin's attack. 14 kills through the first 28 swings, and since then, just 16 for 77. They're hitting 111 in this set. We're not used to seeing that. I needed a moment to process because we're used to them being so prolific and so efficient. With the whistle, that point is going to go to Minnesota. On the note of efficiency as well, during set two, Wisconsin hitting negative for the first time in a set this entire season. And not great here during set three either, barely over 100. Wisconsin trailing by four. Minnesota now in the red zone in set three. But a service air, Shaftmaster upset at herself. That's the 10th by Minnesota. Those are the errors that Minnesota can't make when you're up four against the number six team in the country. You have to go back there laser focused and hit your serve, but keep it in and force the pressure on Wisconsin side rather than just handing them points to potentially get them back in this match. And a looker seen a lot of balls set her way. Franklin will convert with that hammer. Zayna Palabiak is in a good position to make these plays on Minnesota's side, but Franklin is just bringing too much heat. Palabiak can't handle it because of the power that Franklin is bringing. Minnesota leading now by two. We are going down to the wire in set three. The biggest difference for Wisconsin has just been keeping the pressure on Minnesota here, keeping the ball in play and out of system doing a much better job handling some of these swings because Wisconsin's been out of system at such a high clip tonight. In Wisconsin's most recent match, a four-set win against UCLA, they hit 
402. Since they hit 094 against Nebraska the last five matches, they've hit 392, Emily. They are not used to being in a situation like this, having to scrap for points. And Minnesota's not allowing them any three points. I mean, on their side, they are digging everything back there, frustrating the heck out of Wisconsin's offense. The block is also doing a great job. They have five stuffs already. But not only that, they're getting really good touches. That's something that doesn't show up in a stat sheet. Can your block be in a good position to slow it down for your backcourt? Another critical match to determine a Big Ten champion is coming your way tomorrow. The Boilermakers clearing off against the Nittany Lions, a huge top ten matchup. Live coverage begins at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Oh, I cannot wait for that one. The Nittany Lions right now, a win would let them control their destiny to at least a share of the Big Ten title. I think Badger fans watching that are really hoping the Boilers squeak it out. We've been talking about the efficiency, really the lack thereof recently for Wisconsin, where Minnesota has just been steady and really imposing their game right now. Well, and the opposite thing on Wisconsin side, it's inconsistency. You hit 429 one set and then negative during the next one. Yeah, Minnesota's making adjustments, but if you're the number six team in the country trying to prove that you're one of the top teams, you can't have that inconsistency set to set. The freshman setter Furbringer gets it into play. <laughs> Lydia Groats. Damro keeps it up. Again, a big rip, tooling it off the block. Grote's so confident in that swing, going up against a 6'9 blocker and a 6'7 blocker, not afraid of it, just going after those fingertips. Really well executed from Grote outside. She has such an infectious bounce in your step. Yeah. You'll see her skipping around, excited, joyful out there playing. Oh, she's got balloons in her shoes. Sarah Franklin answers right to back, herself tooling it off the block, slicing it cross court. If Wisconsin wants to come back, expect Sarah Franklin to take control from here on out for Wisconsin. <laughs> off the bump set, it's Hanson, but she is denied. Perfectly read up front from Carter Booth. This ball left inside. Smrek made the perfect adjustment to bring it in. And then Booth just finished it off. Watch her hand placement and see how far she gets over the net. I mean, it's a wall to hit around. Followed by an ace by Franklin. All of a sudden, Wisconsin is back in this with their service pressure and their block up front. What a response by the Badgers as this crowd swells. Minnesota calls a timeout. We are tied up at 21 here in set three. The first meeting between these two teams not only went to five, two went to extra points. We are used to an absolute battle between these two. The margin for error is also so small. Both Minnesota and Wisconsin have to play as clean as possible because that is going to be the difference in winning a set or losing a set. And onto that, winning a match or losing this match. Looking at the Big Ten standings. You see Minnesota at 10 and 6 in Big Ten play. Wisconsin, their only losses to this Minnesota team, and they were swept on their home court by Nebraska. They're going to have another shot at Nebraska in Lincoln. And you'll be able to watch that as well as we close down the regular season. Just about four or three matches left for each team. And boy, the matchups we have coming up are incredible. And this is how things are shaking out. Nebraska in control of their destiny right now. If they went out, of course they win it. Penn State, though, can make some noise in the matchup next Friday against Nebraska. They could potentially clinch a share if they take care of Purdue, Washington, and Rutgers. And Wisconsin right now, they need some chips to fall, but expect every match from here on out, it's a must win for the Badgers, especially tonight against Minnesota. This is a must win, and Saturday, especially against Nebraska, that one as well. Minnesota block, no doubt, Awalea in on the stuff. 
huge response from Minnesota right out of that timeout. Awale in the perfect position to make this play, reading it beautifully, dropping those hands in the seam. Minnesota back to a one-point lead. The pancake by Franklin will play off. Cross court, hands in another pancake. This time, Furbringer on the Wisconsin side. Dug by Franklin, a big swing from Groats. Hanson tools it off the block. No fear into the net. Minnesota is taking swing after swing, placing these balls beautifully. Wisconsin, two pancakes, a short stack. In that point alone, Franklin with an incredible up, putting it down. And Furbringer, another one, just to add a little bit more on it. But Man, it's been impressive to watch Minnesota's outsides go up against such a big block in front of them and just not be afraid of it at all. Normally a 6'9 player in front of you, you're gonna get a little bit timid seeing that big of a block in front of you. Not Julie Hansen. Huge breakout season for Hansen, who last year played situationally .64 kills per set, was added to the ABCA National Player of the Year watch list mid-October. Coach Cook says she's been just such a great communicator with me. What she needs from me as a coach, really not that common to see from players. He said from where we started to where we are now, the way we're working together has been phenomenal. Well, it's really difficult too when you have a new coach come in, you're still learning their tendencies and the coach is trying to do the same thing from the players, which a lot of the players don't necessarily think about adjusting that coaching style. And Hanson's been absolutely outstanding, a breakout season and at an important time for this Minnesota team. She has been phenomenal, especially in the big matches, taking control for Minnesota. She's become the hot hand and someone they can rely on night in and night out, really embracing and excelling in this bigger role in her junior season. 13 kills hitting 176. Six, nine digs as well. A lot is on her shoulders with Minnesota offensively. And she, you're right, seems to embrace that. She's absolutely embraced it. And instilling that confidence in her has been so big this season, allowing her to have the confidence to take big swings in the big moments. 3.88 kills per set. Third amongst outsides in terms of efficiency this season. getting the sets and that will fall miscommunication by Minnesota and we are within one miscommunications cannot happen on your side this late in the set against your rival against a top six team you have to communicate about those plays Minnesota still leading by one but Wisconsin making a charge with Sage Gamro at the service line she goes into the net and that critical Minnesota now is set point and those are areas that you just cannot make this late in a set when you're trying to claw your way back. Focus on the pass, though. You have to flush that right away for Damro. <laughs> and we got Orzel with the swing. Hanson off the block, and Minnesota will take a 2-1 to one lead and silence this crowd at the Fieldhouse. That tells you just how deep this rivalry is and how good both programs are. Minnesota seeking its first series sweep against the Badgers since 2018. They have stepped up here on the road to take the last two sets. They drop set one, held Wisconsin to just 12 in set two, and then really fought it out to take set three. Orgel at the service line for the Badgers. Walker directly into that block. Devin Robinson gets the start in the middle for Wisconsin, trying to light a fire on this team, but that started from the service line. Orgel knocking their opponent out of system, forcing the only person that could play this. Easy block, reading that well. Again, they target Wooker, and again, Minnesota out of system. But Groats will put it down on her first swing of set four. Whoever's hitting outside for Minnesota is doing really nice at hitting this ball right in front of the left back player. Damro's in a decent spot to make this, but the attackers on Minnesota's side doing a better job hitting it where she's not. 
Alex Acevedo, this team's leader in aces at the service line, 0.36%. Hanson will sky and fire. Hanson just showing off her versatility up front. She's been ripping cross court all night long. Now going for the line shot, going high hand right off the setter. Beautiful set from Shaftmaster leading her attacker. She worked so hard this season, going high hands, working with a big block specifically for matchups like this. And she is excelling now with 15 kills as Wisconsin will answer back. And Dambro has got them fired up in the huddle. Not only does Evan Robinson provide a little bit more offensive production in the middle for Wisconsin, but she is their ultimate hype woman. If they need a fire lit under them, Devin Robinson's gonna do it for you. Already a couple big plays since she started this set. Oh. Nice pass. Hands in the hands of Hanson. Franklin sends that into the net, and Minnesota will take that point. Franklin just more high air than what we've seen over her last stretch of matches. Again, she's only made three total errors on 129 swings over her last four. Tonight, she's already got six. Wisconsin as a team, 19 attack errors. Now they're hitting 121 for this match. Franklin gets that to fall deep in the corner. Good adjustment from Franklin on this swing, going higher with it, going for the deep corner. This is the best shot that you can have as an outside attacker. You're splitting the left back and middle back defenders perfectly. Trying to fix this scores table, it appears. Keegan Cook lending a hand. Kristen Kelsey. Why not? Everyone pitch in. Looks like maybe a piece of it is loose. Here we go, Dev. <laughs> Got a little break in action. Why not break out the disc? Getting him hype on the court and off the court. And Carlton. We try to fix this panel still. And we're good. All right, we're ready to play on. She's like, you can wait a little longer. <laughs> yeah, I still got more in me. <laughs> I worked on my list of moves. Burbringer back to serve. You're tied up at three. Hanson <laughs> putting it over for Minnesota. Dug by Palabian. Here was Hansen trying to place it over the block, flying in for Brigham. And that will land in front of Acevedo, an extended rally, and Wisconsin with the upper hand. The Badgers are picking up junk on their side a lot better. Minnesota's throwing in a lot of tips because of the big block up front. They're handling them well and able to transition them. Smrek back in, picks up a kill. Hitting 042 in this match, but six kills. They're looking to Hansen, and the point goes to Minnesota as she unloads. Hansen with the precision up front, barely identifying those fingertips and putting it right off. That's the sign of a veteran attacker. Here's a good look at it, just going right for the fingertips. Great shot. Back-to-back 20-kill -back matches. She has 16 tonight, as that will sail along. 11 service errors for Minnesota, just killing their momentum back there. Hansen doing a nice job on the outside, going up against the biggest blocker in the country in Anna Smrek, and she has not been afraid all night long. Listen, Minnity off the slide. And again will unload, dug by Franklin. Orschel gets another crack at it and slices cross court. She is so creative and makes it happen. How about that crafty shot from the Poland? Impressive, Yulia Orschel going right inside the block, not doing too much with it, just placing it right exactly where she knew there was no one there. 12 kills. 
And an ace for the Badgers. This is where Minnesota has to settle in on serve receive, find ways to get out of this one and not let Wisconsin extend this lead. Even State All-American Johnny Parker really helps to connect those in the deaf and hard of hearing communities to financial access to hearing aids, something that is too commonly not covered by health insurance. So this was a great, great way to raise awareness for that community, connect folks to support, and also just see what it's like to be someone in that community experience a game two. The block taking care of business off that swing by Hanson and Wisconsin locked in defensively. Wisconsin's block has been the difference here in set four. This is a must win set for Wisconsin. Backs against the wall, down two one. Their defense has to come up big. Four nothing run is Minity not able to snap it down the line. What a big block does is it forces attackers to hit shots that they don't want to hit because you're trying to avoid the block in front of you. That's why you see errors happen right after that. Wisconsin opening up a five-point lead in a crucial set four, getting Minnesota out of sorts. Here's a free ball their way. Up the middle, Carter Booth, who didn't quite get all of it. And with multiple touches, that's going to be a point to Minnesota. Looked like Wisconsin wasn't really communicating there. And Minnesota's outsides are just tipping left and right up front. When it's the big block of Booth and Smrek right there, they're tipping it over, knowing that, yes, it might be played, but if it's played, it's played by Furbringer, and you're automatically out of system. Hansen gets it into play. Carter Booth bangs it to the floor. There is a better connection for Bringer getting Booth just a little bit higher, allowing her that full extension to go up and absolutely rip the ball. Check out this power. You don't want to be on the other side of that. I don't want to be the floor either. No. Damn Rome, too strong. And a point to Minnesota. That brings them within four. Elise McGee checking in to serve for the Gophers, this team. That's about mid-pack and aces per set, but makes it so tough against the opposition, getting them out of system. This time, Wisconsin looking in check. And a Wooker looking for the touch, and she will get it. Really nice shot from Wooker going up against a big blocker in front of her. Smrek has not had the blocking night that we normally see because Minnesota's doing a good job going for the high hands. Blocks are just seven to six in favor of Wisconsin. Two of the best blocking teams in the Big Ten on display. The net, the jousts, and played by Orgel. She can't get it to go over a point to Minnesota. Another attacking air, the 20th of this match for the Badgers. Ailey Orgel, she can't get tentative. Her best swings have happened when she's going for that high hands, being aggressive with it. No more roll shots. Go to here in set four. There's Orgel unleashing all the heat. Looker right into the block, has that sent back. A blast from the back row for Hansen. It still won't fall with Wisconsin's defense. There's Looker again. And that time out, Wisconsin takes the point. Good opportunities on Minnesota's side, but Wisconsin's defense just better laying out for these plays, doing whatever they can, sacrificing their bodies just to keep these balls alive. Just keeping the pressure on Minnesota, doing such a good job of it. So many points. We have seen players all out defensively. Back row, Franklin delivering a blast. Franklin hasn't been too effective from the back row tonight. Wisconsin's gone away from it because of that. That was a perfect opportunity for Furbringer to get her going. Cook telling us today with Franklin, can we make her less effective in the front 
versus the back row. It can't be both. Yeah, and Minnesota's done a good job of that. They've neutralized Franklin in the back row. Shaftmaster has to chase that down. And a free ball here for Wisconsin. Go back to Franklin in the back row. Alan Lenga turns it back. Again getting a piece of it. Shaftmaster tried to dump it in. Wilker picked up by Franklin in the back row. Another dig by Palabiak. Shaftmaster takes a swing and gets the kill. It's exactly what you want to see. Your setter's <laughs> going up, getting set. No one expects it. Almost a standing roll shot, but she still finds a way to go around the defenders in the backcourt. But man, this defensive intensity, this is exactly what, what you want in a border battle, a massive heated rivalry. Two ranked opponents, so much on the line for both teams. It's so much fun. Players just flying everywhere across the court on both sides. Orjol tools it off the block. Orjol doing a better job being aggressive up front, not being timid on her attacks. Franklin taking charge back there too, knowing that she's a pretty good passer. She's taking charge of that team. Off the tape for Orjol, right there, Shaftmaster. Into the block goes Grote. And that block going out of bounds, barely going past the sideline. A gutsy swing by Grote, just not finishing the block on Wisconsin's side. Here's another look at it, going off of Robinson and barely out of bounds. They have been ready to celebrate on the Minnesota side with that craftiness. Franklin, but kept up. Herbringer getting in on the offensive action. It's a big hug from Robinson off the ground. Now, Furbringer rarely goes up and actually takes a swing at this ball. It's one of the first plays that we've seen all season her do that. A lot of confidence on this ball. Kind of no hesitation just going up and knowing that she can take a rip. Her first kill tonight had three errors on seven swings. I think creativity is just really the defining word for tonight. Grote with a big rip. Franklin into that block. Gets it one more time, and that's sent down by the Minnesota block in Awalea. No questions about that second play, if it touched Minnesota or not. Awalea, her hands reaching over the net, trying to grab that ball and shut it down. What a season she is having at the net. 11th in the nation in blocks per set. In Big Ten play, 1.65 blocks per set. Unreal to lead everyone. Carter Booth, great connection there, and she puts it down. Good response from Wisconsin, nailing that pass right away. That allows the middle attack to get involved, and Furbringer has made it a point to get Booth more involved in this offense here in the fourth. Three and double figure kills for Wisconsin. Rather make that two. Just Franklin and Orgel. Too long there for Furbringer. And Minnesota needing that to crawl back into things here in set four. Wisconsin is an incredibly high error on the serve, but they're missing at inopportune times. It's right when they get momentum and they're going back there and missing. Going to Franklin, chased down by Acevedo, playing exclusively in the back row. Franklin off the bump set. Hansen aggressively into the block. Another time she showed no fear with her swing. Minnesota continually just creeping right back up in this set. A must win for Wisconsin and Minnesota. They want to close it out as soon as possible. Minnesota playing with confidence on the road. They have not won in this building since 2018, within two against the number six team in the country between the border battle rivals. As we look at our kills leaders tonight, Julia Hansen looking for her third straight 20-kill game.
This is an absolute battle. I mean, this is one of the most fun matches that we've seen, exactly reminiscent of what we saw back in Minneapolis two months ago. That one went to five. Wisconsin hoping part two does as well. Up the middle, and a smack like clockwork for the Badgers. Anna Smrek isn't having the best offensive night, barely hitting over zero right now, but Furbringer continuing to keep her involved in the offense, get that confidence up, because she has to be a massive piece from here on out. Hitting under 100, but clearly getting balls sent her way, trying to build that back up again. The original decision is that the ball is in point. Wisconsin, Minnesota is challenging that the ball is out of bounds. Our third challenge tonight, either coach successful on their first back in set one. Tough to tell from that look. Booth in the way on that look. And perfect off screen for that look. But again, the refs have angles that we don't have access to, so they have better looks that we don't have. That might be the best one that we have, but it's so difficult to tell whether the ball's on the line or out of bounds here. I'm not sure there's enough evidence to either overturn or confirm based on that look that we see. Now this is the best one we have so far, but already appears a decision. After review, the call is confirmed. The ball is in. Point will stay with, with Wisconsin, and Minnesota will lose their challenge. So one challenge remaining now for Keegan Cook and Minnesota. That one unsuccessful. And the score will stand at 16 to 13. Here in set four. If this does go to a fifth set, Minnesota would then get an additional challenge back, max of two. That one fell off a table by Franklin. Wisconsin has to continue to keep the service pressure, force Minnesota out of system and keep the pressure on them. They've done a much better job here in set four hitting seams. to attacking for Hansen. Orjol tries to place it over. Furbringer up the middle booth that's kept up by Acevedo. Hansen unloads Damro right there, and here comes Franklin with a blast from the back row. All of a sudden, Franklin's getting going in the backcourt. You do not want to see that if you're Minnesota. Wisconsin has to continue to keep her going and keep the pressure on Minnesota. And Damro doing such a good job in the backcourt keeping these alive. On the slide, Minuti. Smrek takes it off the bump set. Hansen gets no touch there, and Wisconsin rolling now. This is a must-win set for the Badgers, and they are taking control when it matters most. The key from here on out is to just keep the pressure and don't change anything. Four-nothing run for the Badgers. Franklin continues at the service line. Orzel put all her force into that swing. There's the block by Minnesota. Minity and Hansen with the denial. Hansen in the perfect spot to shut down Smrek, closing the seam up really well, and both blockers working really well together. Here's another look at it. Look at Hansen's hand so far over, working so well with her middle. Minnesota's had a response to each Wisconsin run, but now the Badgers maintaining control with Smrek putting it down at the middle. This is what the best teams do. They keep the pressure on you even when they're up. They don't get complacent. They keep the pedal to the metal. That's what it's going to take to not only win this match, but later on in the year to get through the first weekend, get through the second weekend, and potentially reach the national championship. Let's see, working off the slot. Herschel had that sent back from the block. Oh. Going all out. 
which is Franklin looking like she's wearing the jersey. Looker tried to take Tamro's head off, but Wisconsin, a well-earned point here late in set four. Sarah Franklin do whatever she can just to keep this ball up. Check out this hustle. I mean, she is pumping those arms, not only gets it up, sends it over the net. Her all-around game is nearly unmatched. It is, she is so, so good. It's not just her attack that we focus so much on. She has made such massive strides defensively, keeping the ball off the court. Damn Rome, too strong again. Minnesota looking for a spark here to avoid a set five. So it's high momentum plays. Anytime Wisconsin gets a high momentum play, a lot of cheering happening. They go back and they miss a serve. Teams racking up service errors, 21 combined. Here is McGee. Smrek to Orzol. And that will not connect to point to Minnesota. And that starts off a really good serve from Elise McGee, knocking Wisconsin out of system, forcing Orzol to hit a ball that's very tough. McGee, the backup setter behind Shaftmaster, has seized this serving specialist role. Smrek poking it over. Acevedo, her first swing of the night, and that will go for a kill. One for one, and Acevedo is no stranger to Wisconsin. She ended up playing from the first set on in the first matchup and had 12 kills, hitting 310 against this good Wisconsin team. You can tell that that first swing, a lot of confidence going into it. She was stepping in when McKenna Wooker wasn't at 100% health. Wooker only briefly appeared in that very first match, but she'd been playing in the back row the last couple of matches for Minnesota, accepting a new role, had 12 digs in their four set win most recently. But she comes up at a huge moment with a swing for the Gophers. We don't know if we're gonna be going to a set five officially just yet, but tip off in three minutes over at Poly Pavilion in Los Angeles, Idaho State against UCLA. The Bruins, one of the best defensive teams in the country, allowing fewer than 52 points per game. We'll see if they can rack up another win in the non-conference portion of this schedule. If we're not there in time, which is looking like it's not, you can pick that up on the Fox Sports app, not miss a moment of the action. And as soon as we're done here in Madison, we will take you out to Los Angeles. But in this border battle here at the Fieldhouse, Wisconsin holding on to a 21 to 17 point lead. Minnesota has won four of five points with Lisa McGee serving, she has really seized this role, which is a hard one to have on a team. It's so difficult to come in as a serving sub because you literally have one job. You go in, hit a tough serve, try to knock the opponent out of system. She is doing exactly that, forcing Wisconsin out of system in difficult situations. But you also have to sometimes step up and make a play, yeah. sometimes cold. She's back to work. Marshall flipping it over. Marshall again and picked up by Feebolt. Acevedo another swing. Jaffmaster will swing it over herself. Feebolt another dig. In the back row, Franklin. But the point going to Minnesota, it's another illegal back row attack called on Wisconsin. And that's twice tonight. Sarah Franklin stepping over the line. If any part of her foot touches the 10 foot line, it's, it's an illegal back row attack. Either she needs to stay back or Furbringer has to keep this ball a little bit more toward the line. I mean, that is as close as it gets. Good ID from the ref again. Elise McGee King this 4 0 run for the Gophers. But that time it will land for the Badgers. That's a side out at a critical time for Wisconsin, especially to nail that pass in this massive moment. Kudos to the service seat for the Badgers. CeCe Crawford, that her first kill on five swings. Anderson into the net, and Minnesota still has life here on the road. 
Door cracked back open for the Gophers. Wisconsin has to play clean from here on out. They cannot hand Minnesota any more points. And Minnesota has an excellent server at the line and Melanie Schaffmaster. On the slide, Devin Robinson with a missile. Robinson's been a game changer here in the fourth set, providing a lot of stability defensively and offensively, trying to be the spark plug that Wisconsin needs to push a fifth set and stay in this one. You just brace yourself when she is getting into that slide motion for what's to come. You're like, here we go. And there's Franklin putting it down. Set point for the Badgers. Orgel into the net, and Minnesota still alive. Those are the plays you can't have. You can't crack the door back open. You need to put a team out when you can. Acevedo, strongest server on this team for Minnesota. Dug by Palabiak off the swing from Robinson. Herbert with one hand and putting a dent in the floor is Robinson to send it to five. We'll grab that extra cup of coffee. This is exactly what we wanted. A border battle, one of the best run. One, first time that has happened in this series since 2002. Minnesota won both of those as well. And what a series this has been this season. Minnesota has not won in this building since 2018, has not taken the season series since 2018 as well. And they will start at the service line with Elise McGee. Robinson was so key in set number four. Can't get that to fall. She gets it off the slide. And again, tries to put a tent in the floor with that swing. Devin Robinson has been the difference for Wisconsin coming back in this match. They were down two to one and in the fourth, Robinson decided that she was coming to play. Defensively, offensively, doing an incredible job on both sides of the ball. Robinson, seven kills, hitting 417. Really coming alive in the latter part of this match. Orzel goes off the tape and down. In the fifth set especially, it is so important to have a 10-second memory and forget the last play that happened. Minnesota cannot let Wisconsin go on a bigger run because a game to 15 goes by really fast. Horschel nearly gets it again. Off the overpass. That will land out of bounds. Minnesota with the point, and Hansen another kill. And now Minnesota back to their best rotation with Shaftmaster serving throat Awalea and Hansen up front. 19 kills for Hansen to go along with 13 digs or six double-double of the season. Can Minnesota go on a run here on the road? And it starts like that. The biggest reason why Minnesota has almost taken control of this match has been the service pressure. It's not necessarily been the aces, but just knocking them out of system at such a high clip. They've been picking apart Wisconsin service the entire night. Normally a part of the game, not particularly vulnerable for Wisconsin, but Minnesota making it that way. Devin Robinson has been untouchable the last couple sets for the Badgers. Robinson has completely turned it off up a notch. That swing was just nasty, cutting right outside the block. Check out the power that she's got. And that confidence and swagger, that's just something you can't teach. I'm gonna say, it's not just the fire in her arm, it's the fire with her presence and her demeanor. As Wisconsin earns another ace. 
Minnesota has to bounce back really quick here in this fifth set, especially in this kind of environment in front of over 7,000 fans. They need to create their own energy and stop the runs as soon as possible. CC Crawford serving. Rising and firing throats. Franklin steps into it and crushes that ball. Wisconsin getting everyone involved. But it feels like it can be anyone's night, any given night, with the power that this team has offensively. And it has to be. When you want to go deep in the tournament and win these big matchups, everyone has to be involved. Minnesota able to keep it alive, nearly another ace. And there for the second contact is Shaftmaster, then Grote down the line. Great response for Minnesota, siding out at a time where they needed it most. You can't go down by three points in a fifth set because it comes so nearly impossible to catch back up. Massive swing by Grote, just catching the line. Carter Kluth with the set. Throat again, steps into it, and delivers another kill. Minnesota within one here in set five. The first time these two teams met, Groat had four kills in the fifth set alone and was a massive reason why they ended up winning in the fifth. Expect her to get a lot of sets here. Minnesota's responded time and time again, whether it was losing the first set and winning the next two, or stopping runs at a frequent rate. Roche just gonna get it over, a free ball here. A roof over the net. Walker will not get the, no, she does get the touch. And a point for Minnesota. Walker was pulled during that last set, giving her just a little bit of a break in the front court. This was a much better swing right away, nailing that ball in fingertips. With her 12 kills, hitting 226. Carter Booth, no doubter. The connection between Furbringer and Booth was very shaky to start with the first three sets. Here in set four and set five, that connection looks as good as ever. Furbringer's giving her that height that Booth needs to get on top of it and smack it down. Now Wisconsin in their best front row. Smack Booth and Franklin up front, massive front line. For Bringer at the service line, targeting Hanson. Orzol will play. Off the bump set, Grote once more, and she will tool it off the block. We're tied up at six. We've got a back and forth battle right away. Both sides playing all out defensively to keep these balls alive. And great out of system decision to go with Grote at a shorter blocker against Franklin rather than the left side against Smrak. Kalaviak, too long, point to the Badgers. The errors are something you can't let pile up here in the fifth set because it goes very fast if you're giving the other team points, especially when it's this close. Franklin going to Walker. She has to be pushed out of the way. Minnesota out of sorts and serve receive. And Wisconsin goes up by two. Bit of a chaotic play on Minnesota's side. Walker just not able to get out of the way in time. Well, so you got to shake off right away and just nail the next pass. Switching sides here in set number five. Getting down to the wire in Madison, Wisconsin. Leading up by two. So pumped to see this one coming your way. The Badgers and Huskers in a Saturday Night Volleyball Showdown. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on the Big Ten Network. And the Fox Sports at Nebraska swept Wisconsin in Madison. The first meeting held them to 094. The Badgers get another crack. Orschel off the bump set and dug by Hansen. Awkward at the net. Smrack knows what to do with it. Timeout, Minnesota. With as big as Wisconsin's front line is, Minnesota has to keep this ball off the net because the Badgers are going to win nine times out of ten on those 50-50 balls. 
Nine to six, the Wisconsin lead getting to a crunch time. Wisconsin and Nebraska, the only teams that have beaten Wisconsin in Big Ten play. As soon as we're done here and wrap things up from the field house, we'll take you out to Westwood for Idaho State UCLA men's basketball. A close one here to start nearing the midway point of the first half with the Bruins looking to go four and one this season. You can also pick that up right now before we get you out there here on Big Ten Network on the Fox Sports app. Going down to the wire in Madison, a top 20 matchup. And Emily, we've talked about it since the outset, how this is a must win for the Badgers to try and win a Big Ten championship. And Wisconsin needs every win they can get right now. They are two games back in the Big Ten title race. Nebraska undefeated, Penn State one match behind, and then Wisconsin two matches behind them. They have to get every win. This is a must-win match right now for the Badgers. Nebraska has won 23 straight matches. Penn State at 15 and one in Wisconsin, nearing the home stretch here. After this one, just three matches remaining. To try and at least get a piece of that Big Ten title. They've won four of the last five. They won four straight, just surrendering it to Nebraska last season, but within their reach. Shaftmaster catches everyone off guard. And Wisconsin's coaching staff is looking for a whistle. Now this is a play Shaftmaster is back row on. Wisconsin arguing that it was above the plane of the net. This is a call that Wisconsin actually got called on earlier during the match that Furbringer was above the plane of the net. So you can see the frustration. And that ball, I mean, it looks over the plane to me. And she's definitely jumping. And that's a subject subjective call, you cannot challenge it. takes the swing. <laughs> Looker doing it off the block. A smile creeping onto her face. And Minnesota within one. All of a sudden, Minnesota stringing points together. That door cracked open just a little bit more. Now just down one against their rival. Wisconsin calling a timeout in this one point set five. Minnesota. 17 and 9 overall, 10 and 6 in Big Ten play. This would also be a huge for their resume as well. It would be massive for Minnesota. They've already taken down Wisconsin. They've taken down Texas. Minnesota is not out of the sights of potential hope. Hopes to host for the NCAA tournament. Yes, they're 28 in the RPI, but they could still do it, especially with the win here. First meeting between these two teams to open up Big Ten play back on September 25th. It was a five-set win for Minnesota. Two sets went to extra points. They came back from down two to one, something Wisconsin is trying to do tonight. They out-hit the Badgers 250 to 188. And I remember you and I, Emily, marveling in that match. 148 combined digs in that one. I mean, it was a defensive battle, even to start from the beginning up until the end. That's exactly what we're seeing tonight. Minnesota, you see their tournament resume right there, 28 in RPI. Where the Badgers on the other side, number eight with the, the third strength of schedule. That tells you just how hard of opponents Wisconsin has played. And this is a team that might be on the outside looking in of hosting a regional, but if they can win this matchup, if they can potentially take down Nebraska on Saturday, they're looking at a potential clinching a share of the Big Ten title. And I don't know, that looks pretty good on a resume to host a regional. It's going to be chaos and excitement over the next oh, yeah. week and a half, and I'm ready for it. I, I, I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, kudos to the Big Ten schedulers for this <laughs> end of the season. It is crazy. Ball in the hands of Lydia Groats. Franklin, very nice pass. And Orgel does what she's supposed to do. Just an easy play for Yulia Orzel. Not the perfect situation, but she identified the open spot on the court in front of her and put it perfectly right there. Orzel, 51 swings, 14 kills now. Well, Damro getting it into play. Oh, slide, Minity 
will pick up the kill. She had a huge kill in set five in the first match, and she gets it again. Wisconsin's pretty much neutralized Minnesota's middles throughout this entire match. They're hitting zero up until that point. Minity coming up at a clutch time. Clutch is right. Wisconsin still with a one-point lead. Orzel before Palambi, it flies right in. There is Hansen meeting a brick wall of Badgers. You don't want to see 6-9 and a Smrek in front of you if you're taking a swing in a fifth set. Smrek gets dialed in these big moments. This is when she comes up most clutch. Finding ways to just shut it down. Those hands, it's a wall in front of you. Something Coach Sheffield has said of Smrek, she doesn't flinch in big moments. Goes back to Melissa Minity. How huge are these swings for the sophomore here in set five? You can't teach clutch. That is a massive opportunity for Minity to come up big. That's exactly what she did in the fifth set last time these two met. It was 14 to 14, and she set up match point. Off the tape for McGee. Devin Robinson with the slide, picked up by McGee as well. And Hansen will terminate with power. Hansen is a player that's gonna come up clutch for Minnesota. She becomes a hot hand. They will look to her in these big moments. Expect her to get the ball. Three straight 20 plus kill matches for Julia Hansen. In the back row. Franklin takes some heat off and it works. It's not oftentimes you see Franklin go to an off speed when she's swinging in that position, but she perfectly placed it and caught Minnesota off guard. One point lead for Wisconsin down the home stretch. It's too strong for Orzel. Wisconsin trying to beat the number 16 team in the country without their top two defensive players, Lola Schumacher, Jolte Guchtekin, day to day with respective injuries. And we are tied up at 12. Shaftmaster, an ace! Timeout called by Wisconsin. Melanie Shaftmaster, one of the most experienced, established, and accomplished players in Gopher history, loves this matchup and comes up huge at the service line. Shaftmaster is just made for these big moments. Whether the ball is in her hand setting or she's back there serving, she knows exactly where to put it. She's been in so many of these big matches before. In her fifth year of collegiate play, she rises to the occasion in these kind of moments. If you ask her her favorite moments in her Gophers career, she's seen a lot as a fifth yeah. year now. Beating Texas this year. The time she's beaten Wisconsin, which could be potentially a third time here too tonight. First lead this set for the Gophers. When we're done here in Madison, we'll take you right out to Pauley Pavilion, UCLA men's basketball, building up a lead here against Idaho State. You can also pick that up on the Fox Sports app if you can't wait. And the closing couple points here at the UW Fieldhouse, but we'll get you out to Los Angeles as soon as we are wrapped up here in the border battle. A critical ace by Melanie Shaftmaster gives Minnesota a one-point lead. And she gets right back to it. Sarah Franklin will rise, fire, and connect. 
star power comes alive when it is tight in a fifth set against your rival. So much on the line, especially for the, this Wisconsin team with hopes for a shot at the Big Ten title. That's when the star power comes alive, and that is Sarah Franklin, the reigning national player of the year. Expect her to get set a lot. Crawford at the service line. And you throw fearlessly into that block. Franklin over the top. Poked back by Carter Booth, timing it perfectly. And Wisconsin has match point. with Minnesota. That lands out, and we're tied up at 14. A tense, dramatic finish. Border battle part two with Hansen at the service line. Carter Booth puts it down. Great answer on Wisconsin's side, nailing the pass, getting that middle going. Wisconsin's gonna need it from everyone if they're gonna squeak this out. Now back to their best rotation, Smrep, Booth, and Franklin up front, their biggest front line. Second match point for the Badgers. Walker. Able to connect. She gets the touch and the kill. The confidence from a player to swing against the biggest block in the country and still get the touch on it and swing with that kind of power shows you what kind of player McKenna Wooker is. 14 kills for Wooker, the Wisconsin native, has upwards of two dozen friends and family in the stands. Sarah Franklin has that turned back. And Minnesota's block making the difference. Now they have match point. Flashback to what we saw two months ago. Minnesota ended up squeaking it out 18 to 16. Both these teams are very comfortable with these high pressure situations. Roach has that sent right back down. Booth is a force. Great players make big plays in the big moments. Carter Booth is doing exactly that, taking over the front line defensively. Match point again for the Badgers. in by Wooker. And Groats will land that in the back line. 17 all. This is a heavyweight fight right now. You saw the fight last weekend. This is better than that. We are seeing punch for punch, blow for blow. Orzel. Tries to push it in. Four. 
Walker gets the contact. We will play on some more here in set five. Now it just becomes a battle of will. Which team is willing to do the extra step to make that defensive play, to continue to stay in the play on the swing, to get that extra execution piece on the set? Comes down to grit here in the fifth. Smrek has that dog. Again by Feeball. Hands it a big swing. Orzo will chase it down. Again, Damro keeps it up. He was sent back by Shaftmaster, an opportunity for the Gophers, but denied by Crawford. Defensive intensity on Wisconsin side. Sage Damro, the fill-in libero in the backcourt, coming up clutch when Wisconsin needed it most. Two times during that rally, nearly taking one to the face, but gets the hand up in time. Then CeCe Crawford coming up big. Hansen into the block, and Wisconsin will split the season series. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go to the bathroom. 